Let's learn these simple prompts that are going to give us better code outputs in any AI model we use. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, I want to go over some very simple prompts that I have used in the past years when coding of AI that should help you out a lot. These prompts are going to work whether you code with ChatGBT, maybe you code with Claude, or coding within the IDE itself, whether that is Cursor AI, Windsurf, everything above the board. So let's go ahead and jump in. So first off, before we even jump into prompting, understand the models, right? So what I like to use is ChatGPT 3 mini. I already know some of you in the comments are like, Corbin, Claude's better. Okay, fine, use Claude. If you like Claude, use Claude. If you wanna know which model you like better, just mess around, play around with it. Personally, I find best code outputs with O3 mini. That's my context though. I build software that has artificial intelligence integrated into it. Your context might be different. If you're developing video games, I have no clue what the best model is. Let me know in the comments if you do. First prompt though. Here's the first half of the first prompt. Here's the code I'm working with today. And what you're gonna do is simply copy all the code. JS, CSS, Python, whatever it may be. So for this, let's say I'm working the app.js and the CSS, I would paste the entire JS file. I'm over here, I would copy the entire CSS file and paste the entire CSS file as well. The second half of this prompt is gonna be simply, are you ready to see what I want? Now on the surface level, some of y'all are gonna be like, this is very basic Corbin, but trust me, if you have no coding experience and more specifically, you wanna learn how to use code and AI, this is fundamentally important. What this does is that this basically loads the chat with the entire context of all your code. So when you hit enter here, it isn't going to start rambling, which is very annoying when dealing with AI models. It's simply going to say like, okay, cool. What do you want to do? Watch. And there we go. This allows us to have a kind of like a starting point, you know, like at a checkpoint in a game where if I code from here on out, or if I start prompting from here on out over here, I can always come back to this original prompt, right? So let's just say change all the color into a light UI. Hit enter. It's going to give me an output here. And let's just say we keep going down this little rabbit hole and we're like, wait, hold up. I actually don't like this rabbit hole. You can always scroll all the way back up into the chat here and simply just select the original message. Therefore, I come over here, I hit this pencil, and there we go. We start from ground zero again, but ground zero with all this original context of the original code files. Therefore, second prompt. Here is the second prompt you can check out here. Let's say we wanna make our code here into a retro theme. So we'll put in the request. Okay, I wanna make my code more of a retro theme from the 90s, but here is the second prompt y'all can start leveraging please output the entire new JS and CSS file. Now, obviously, whatever your context may be, so maybe it was just a Python file, you'd be like, please output the entire Python file. This makes it so when you're working with these AI models, we're gonna be able to get the entire file outputted, which allows us to simply copy the entire JS from this chat and paste it over here. This is extremely helpful if you're a beginner because end of the day, if it starts spewing out little code blocks, like here's this little code that's changed, here's this code that's changed, and it's all fragmented, that can be annoying. Therefore, opt for entire file outputs. So you can simply come over to this app.js file, copy it here, and paste it over into your IDE. And we got our entire app CSS as well. Let's up the complexity here. Let's say we wanna do something more advanced with our code. What's the best way to approach that? Now, one example of doing something more advanced for code, whether that's in the back end or the front end, is dealing with external APIs, right? So in this context, this is an API call to MailBluster, which is a email CRM. Regardless of everything I just said there, here's the situation. You're creating your landing page, you wanna accept emails, and you wanna accept emails, but you don't necessarily know how to read API documentation slash implement it correctly. Now, in theory, I could simply tell, hey, ChadGBT, Claude, we are using MailBluster, how do I subscribe a new lead? And I could prompt it right there. But let's get the best output here. In order to do that, simply just go to the documentation. So for this, we would just go to API doc. Obviously, whatever your context is, it would just simply be the software name API. And take it one step further there, this step and this skill set I'm about to show you, you can leverage in any complex type of code, right? This is even coming from, if you're on a stack overflow form, you see some example code you wanna leverage, use this logic when I'm about to show you. It's simple though, manage leads, create, don't need to know anything, just copy everything. Everything, Corbin? everything. So with all this copied, I would come back to my chat here and we would do something along the lines of, okay, we want to subscribe a new email using MailBluster. Here's info, whatever action you want to functionally do within your application, you would put there. But the skill and prompt three of what you're learning here is your ability just to front load a ton of data, but data that is relevant. So I'd paste all that API doc in there. I'd hit enter. And now it contextually knows the most modern up-to-date information on how to do said action. Therefore, the 
answer we're about to get from a AI model is going to be more accurate. If we alternatively just said the exact same thing and didn't paste the entire API doc page, we could get inaccurate information. This is going to lead to better code outputs when using AI, but let me leave you with two little bonus tips. First one being sometimes, especially if your file has changed a lot from the original input field of like how we started this chat, just start a new chat, click this, start a new chat and use that first prompt. Reset, copy and paste your more updated files now and go down the same little rabbit hole. Second major tip here that could be very useful and this applies to any AI model. Typically, they are gonna have something called custom instructions. So in ChatGPT, that is found here, customize ChatGPT. In cursor, for example, it's gonna be in your settings found in rules. What this allows you to do is mitigate assumptions made by your AI model. What I mean by that is that you can identify things here like the operating system you're coding with, the specific application you are even trying to code, so it has more context in every new chat. Now, I made a whole separate video on this, so I'll leave it right there, and I'll leave it in the description down below so you can check it out and how to start leveraging this in your workflow. But for now, that does this video, so make sure you leave a like if you found value in today's video, and I'll see you in the next video. AI coding. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.